And when they find a thousand bottles of baby oil and 500 dildos, there's some suspect activity happening, Piers. It's like you pass by the door and see a party in an apartment. You go in, you have a drink, and then you go home and realize Jeffrey Dahmer was eating and killing people. Some women went there thinking, oh, you know, we're going to have a freak off. The fact that we as a society, we got mad for a week, money talks, and bullshit walks. Esther, please bear with me. We all know that there are pass arounds. Someone like P. Diddy, I'm sorry, it should be the guillotine. If that was my daughter and I saw that on camera, it would have been a rap, a rap for Diddy. Just one year ago, Sean Diddy Combs, one of the most successful rappers and producers in music history, was on top of the world. The VMAs honored him as a global icon. The frequency is up. We're having a club love party. That's like a special private party that I thought, but you're invited. Uh, you're invited, club love. It's all R&B all night. Uh, all the things that I would play in my vibration, my frequency, because my frequency is different. Uh, well, the party's over for uh, Diddy Combs. That global icon has now become a global pariah. Last week, Damian Williams, a US district attorney in New York, stepped in front of a microphone and told a, sh a shocked world this. Today, I'm announcing the unsealing of a three-count indictment, charging Sean Combs with racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking, interstate transportation for prostitution. The indictment alleges that between at least 2008 and the present, Combs abused, threatened, and coerced victims to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. As alleged in the indictment, to carry out this conduct, Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity, including sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and the obstruction of justice. Well, Diddy is now awaiting trial at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn. He was denied bail. According to some reports, he's refusing food and could even be on suicide watch. The case threatens to engulf the VIP world with fever speculation about sordid tapes featuring celebrities and even politicians. So who knew what and when? How far could this go? Is this the music version of the Epstein scandal? And why was Diddy protected for so long by so many people? In a special edition of Piers Morgan Uncensored, we're looking into a scandal that is rocking the world of show business and way beyond. Here to unpack the fall of a global icon from the from the Criminal Lawyer Reacts YouTube channel, Bruce Rivers, the editor of Hollywood Unlocked and a man who partied with Diddy, Jason Lee, PBD's podcast, Angry Patriot, Vinny Ashana, and here in the studio, Uncensored contributor, Esther Kraku. Uh, well, thank you all for joining me. I appreciate it very much. Bruce Rivers, let me start with you because you've been getting great traction with your YouTube channel uh, by exploring every part of this scandal. Uh, it really does feel that is getting bigger and bigger and is right up there with Epstein, with Weinstein, with these other huge scandals we've seen. What do you think is going to happen here? I think he's going to go to the prison uh, for the rest of his natural life. He's the guy, the federal guidelines are going to be astronomical. There's so much that they've gotten in the search warrant from Miami and LA. And uh, he's really looking at um, sex trafficking with a lot of aggravating factors. Which is the most serious for him? Um, the abuse, the the um, the RICO, the RICO encompasses all the other statutes. So it's the sex trafficking, and then all the other enhancements with that. So guidelines, he's probably looking at an in excess of three hundred months. Those are just the guidelines. Mm. I mean, I saw that he. Uh, through his lawyers, they put a, a bail package proposal that included a $50 million bond co-signed by Combs, his mother, and other family members. It was to include home detention, surrender of his passport, weekly drug tests, a visitor log that would be submitted to pretrial <clears throat> services each night. But that was rejected. I mean, that, that in itself said to me just how serious the trouble is for Diddy Combs. Well, you have a situation where this is a presumptive detention situation. In other words, the, the defense has to prove, you know, rebut the presumption. And while this is all going on, we have witness tampering. We've got uh, potential bribes of witnesses. And, uh, and then you also have possession of drugs and ammunition and firearms that are obliterated serial numbers. And then he was on his plane trying to go somewhere uh, earlier in the year. So 
we have a situation where there's a risk of flight and definitely a danger to the public and a, and a, a potential obstruction of justice. Let me turn to um, Esther on this because Diddy, you know, I, I met Diddy a few years ago at a, at a party where he was the absolute cock of the wall. This guy was one of the biggest stars in the world, fated by everyone in the room that night, fated by the paparazzi when he came out. It looked like he was as big as it could get. If it's right, if if Bruce is right, he's going to prison for the rest of his life. This is one of the biggest downfalls I can remember in entertainment. Oh, absolutely. But I, I'm never satisfied with just one person going down. It's like the whole Epstein thing. We don't actually know anyone who was associated with Epstein, who went to his nonce island, who really did the, got involved right. in the criminal activity. And I think to be P. Diddy, to do the things that he's being accused of, you have to have a whole team around you. Yeah. It's an infrastructure, basically. Mm -hmm. And I, I just really despise the fact that he's probably going to be the only one that's going to be taken down. This, he didn't get that powerful just by being by himself. He, he had the support of politicians, of other wealthy benefits. Well, there is a suggestion. So many people in the industry. Right, but there is. Why a, is he only taking the? Well, there is a suggestion that he may start talking to Ooh. the feds and, and do some kind of deal. Now, Epstein never got the chance to do that yeah. or to take that kind of deal, even if he was offered it, because he he died. Right, he, he apparently committed suicide. Yeah. Speculation has run riot ever since that somebody got to him, but that appeared to be the fact that he took his life. Uh, but that seemed to silence everything and stop the process moving to other people. Uh, but here, if Diddy was to suddenly start going after everyone and naming people, and there are tapes, as many people believe, depicting a lot of other people, famous people involved in this stuff, this could get massively bigger very quickly. Well, the thing is, so many people know, knew a lot of things. So, like, 50 Cent, for example, used to, was very open about his his disdain for, for Puff Daddy, and he used to call him gay all the time. Mm. You know, he used to rap about it. Eminem has lyrics in some of his music about, you know, P. Diddy being a raper, for example. There's so many people in the industry. Mm. Nicki Minaj, for example, certainly knew some things, particularly about Meek Mill's relationship with, with P. Diddy. If anyone's heard that... that, that horrible tape, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. Mm. So there are these high profile celebrities that certainly saw things. And the question is, how do we incentivize them to speak? Because if, if they would come forward, then actually, even the people, the other power pe powerful people in the background that are hiding wouldn't be able to hide for much longer. But the question is, how did they do that? How did they incentivize right. the people who saw things to come forward? And it might be a complete coincidence, Vinny, but we're already seeing people like Usher and Pink, who were friendly with, uh, with Diddy Combs. They've deleted a lot of their social media. We don't know why, but it could be coincidence. It looks very it's like suspicious. it's not a coincidence. Um, what do you make of the scandal? Yeah. Um, well, uh, well, Piers, being, you know, being in the in entertainment industry, I left the military, went to Hollywood, you know, acting and all this, this whole, it's, it's, it's a cult. It's, and, and I love that she, she brought up um, Epstein and how, you know, Gal he's, he's apparently dead. Ghislaine Maxwell, She's in prison for 20 some odd years, I guess. Where are all the customers? Yep. Where are all the people that were, you know, with these girls? You know what I mean, Piers? Where, where are all the victims? Where are all these people? Not one customer. I know Prince, what, Andrew, he, he was obviously, he was there. He was, you know, with the underage girl. And what was his punishment? I think the queen, when she was alive, she just relieved him of his royal duties. He couldn't be out in public. But I, I've seen it firsthand, Piers. These people with this power and this level of influence, they, they, they go out with impunity as if they're never going to get caught. All the celebrities love them. And they all knew, Piers, Hollywood's not a big town. The entertainment industry, it's not a big town. Everybody knows, everybody knows who Diddy was. Everybody knows who Harvey Weinstein was, Piers. And everybody knew Epstein and all these people were. And nobody ever said nothing. You have people like Michelle Obama, Barack, everybody praising them. Harvey Weinstein, these people were such great people. All the parties, all the things that people went to, Piers, everybody knew. The recording and the cameras... That's a whole different story together. You know, people claim that Epstein was a part of Masada recording and blackmailing people. Did he? Imagine how many people are panicking right now that he did it. But one of the main things, Piers, that pissed me off the most is, is the, the Usher and the Justin, Justin Bieber situation. Bieber. Oh, my uh, God. He was on Howard Stern. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, and I, yeah, uh, 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 Usher was on, I believe it was Howard Stern a while mm -hmm. ago, and he explained that he went to Puffy's Flavor Camp at 14 years old. His parents dropped him off with, uh, with uh, Diddy, and he saw stuff that he said he couldn't believe. 14 years old, Piers, okay? And God knows what he did with him. There's stories about him. And then he sent Justin him. Bieber There's there videos as where well. He said, Usher, after, after having seen oh, that, yeah, he well, also sent Justin and, Bieber there. Great, great point. And if the rumors are true, uh, Piers, he, then he brings up uh, 
uh, Justin Bieber, and Justin Bieber has looked like he has been through hell. hell. He, was, he was seen with Diddy a couple months ago, and Diddy's patting him down for a while. These people, peers, are disgusting. They're evil. Thank God. Thank God Justin Bieber has found God. If he didn't find God, I don't think we'd have him. These people are, are predators. They're, they're disgusting human beings. It's a cult, peers, and I hope to God that they find God because the end game for people like that, peers, is not good. Okay. Jason, you know Diddy. You've been at some of these parties. Does what you're reading now shock you or was it a very wild scene? Yeah, there's a lot to impact, unpack here. First of all, I want to be very clear on the conflation between going to a Diddy party and then going to Diddy after dark. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I said yesterday on a program that, you know, it's like you pass by the door and see a party in an apartment. You go in, you have a drink, and then you go home and realize Jeffrey Dahmer was eating and killing people. Mm. People that went to a Diddy <laughs> party, you know, like Ashton Kutcher, Demi Moore, Beyonce, Jay-Z, I don't know if they were at Diddy after dark when people were getting sprayed down with uh, baby oil. What I will say is that, you know, you've heard a lot of things about Diddy over the years, blowing up cars, harassing people, threatening people, having people killed, allegedly, all allegations. But I think Esther made the, the, the most important point that all of us are just in the culture figuring out this crisis is where were all the people who were booking flights, booking hotels, yep. driving people to rooms, knowing what was happening? Why is he in there by himself? Why is why are nobody speaking out? Why is Usher and Justin Bieber not condemning these rumors? Why where is Beyonce and Jay Z? You know, yes, people where are they are watching this train People, people are watching this train wreck happen and just trying not to have the conductor call their name. And that's yes. the problem. And see, the problem that I have is that while we all enjoy the fruit of the industry, if you're eating poisonous fruit, then you need to be a part of that tree that's on its way down, too. And the problem with uh, being um, castrated in public right now, which is what is happening to Diddy, no pun intended, is that he's not given his due process. So on one hand, you're like, let it go through the process. But on the other hand, you know, we, we have, you know, the energy that the young man just had before me, that they know that this is happening in the industry that is not regulated or not controlled. And who's it going to happen to next? Yeah. Well, I want to bring in uh, Lord Jamar, American uh, rapper and DJ, someone who knows uh, Diddy Combs well, been uh, again at some of these parties. Uh, Lord Jamar, first of all, your reaction to the sheer scale of charges against Diddy. Are you as stunned as everybody else by this? Uh, not really, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, and I want to uh, re reiterate what Jason said about the regular Diddy parties and the Diddy After Dark. Mm -hmm. I've been to regular Diddy parties, like in clubs, the PG version. Mm -hmm. Never been to anything in his home or anything like that or any After Dark type of stuff. But I'm not really surprised. I've heard rumors about this guy for years. Yeah, I mean, there were these supposed freak-offs, they were called. These are the other parties that you guys are alluding to, uh, where he distributed mm -hmm. a variety of controlled substances to victims, so... Uh, illegal drugs, uh, in part to keep the victims obedient and compliant at these free coughs. Uh, the police raided Diddy's house. They found narcotics, three AR-15 uh, guns with defaced serial numbers, ammunition, a drum magazine, evidence aligning more, again, with the free coughs. They found a 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricant. Uh, and, again, the indictment alleges that Coombs uh, subjected victims to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse to cause the victims to engage in the freak-offs. Um, I mean, Lord Jamar, it, it all sounds pretty horrific, what was going on to these women at the freak-offs. Were they going there with their eyes wide open to what was going to be happening? Were they caught up in some depravity which only became clear when they got through the door? What, what do you think was happening here? I mean, I can only imagine... Like I said, I wasn't there. I think I think it was probably a combination of the two. Some women went there thinking, oh, you know, we're going to have a freak off. Mm. But some of them may have gone there innocently thinking, oh, I'm just going to be around, you know, famous people, Sean Puffy Combs. And then he's like, here, have a sip of this. And she doesn't Pierce, know. Pierce, Pierce, let, let, me give, let me give you some context. Let me give you some context because I'm going to just cut straight to it. I have been to the home, to the house parties where there have been extra 
police or not police, but uh, maybe off-duty police working in security, security, armed security, shutting down the entire street because there are so many people trying to get in the home. Think about it. Beyonce's on the other side of the gate. Jay-Z's on the other side of the gate. Mm. Every major celebrity, the Kardashians, on the other side of the gate. People are trying to get in that party. The first Diddy party I went to was at Prince's house. So you want to go to Prince's house to the Diddy party where Tyrese is performing and Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher are swinging on swings. That is what's happening on the other side of the wall. And so... The one thing that makes this party different than a, a Jamie Foxx party or any other celebrity party that wrangles a bunch of young women or women or guys or whatever, too, is that Diddy didn't let you bring your security in the party. That is the one thing that I thought was odd because, you know, mm -hmm. I came one time with my security and no other security other than Diddy's security is allowed to be inside the, the, the building. Mm -hmm. I mean, I saw Jay-Z and T.D. Jakes in there. Every major celebrity you can think of who may or may not get along may be on the other side of that gate with no security. And so now as you see this unfold, my wonder is, well, why weren't people able to have their protection with them when they were in the in the room? But uh, mm -hmm. but the one thing I will add that, you know, people don't want to talk about is Diddy is not the only person that has these parties where they have people wrangling a bunch of women and there's nobody carding at the door. There's no regulation, right? And the, the, the reason is because these guys want to have a bunch of women around. And what happens when you mix that with a bunch of liquor and other things, when the regular party goes home, what happens after everybody's gone? Yeah, Bruce, no, let me... It is, this is different. Well, well, let me... Uh, Bruce, I want to just uh, put to you the defence from Diddy's lawyer, uh, Mr. Agnifilio. Uh, he maintained mm -hmm. there's no coercion and no crime. He's not afraid of the charges. Mm -hmm. And he said he believed that Combs was the target of an unjust prosecution. What's your response to that? Well, one of the things that we talked about, the people who arranged the flights, the people who arranged this and that, all the people in the chain, those are all going to be witnesses against Diddy. We'll start there. Second of all, he's got terabytes of video all over the place. Thirdly, they've got him uh, on recording threatening a witness uh, trying to get them to not come forward and testify. They've got video of uh, him beating a woman, dragging her through, you know, uh, Cassie, uh, yeah. dragging her through a hotel. They've got uh, giving IVs to recover. It, just the and the, the key wording here is force, fraud, and coercion. You know, that's the key wording for the sex trafficking. Yeah. And you know, it's one thing to have a party with a bunch of ladies and 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 enjoy that. Mm -hmm. It's quite another thing to, to keep them there for days until their bruises heal. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, a freak off, as it's defined in the, in the uh, indictment, isn't just a party. No. It, is, it is force, it's fraud, it's coercion. And, it, and you're going to see that he is, there won't be a defense to it. He's gonna, his lawyers will take as much money as they possibly can out of him. But the case really will speak for itself. Yeah, With you know, apparently this was happening to men too. Yeah, is... I think that's that's probably. The, the well, I was going to ask you about that, uh, Lord Jamal. I mean, there have been lots of wild conspiracy theories. Maybe some of them aren't so wild, but there was one of the big ones is that uh, Diddy was was secretly gay. Is that? Do you think that could be true? Which 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 which, which, which is not a crime if he is or was. Yeah, no, 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 Lord Jamar said that you know also men were abused and stuff. It only plays into into the context of what Lord Jamar just said. Is the sense that if if Diddy turned out actually to be gay or bisexual, then the victims here are not just women yeah, necessarily. Yeah. They could also include no. men. Is that what you're, is that what you're saying, Lord Jamar? And I'm just saying, yeah, it's definitely not a crime for whatever his proclivity may be. But if you're making people do things against their will mm -hmm. or hanging things over their head in order to, you know, try to trade, you know, a little quid pro quo, um, that's not cool. You know, when people use their power uh, to try to manipulate certain situations. Um, that's the coercion. Yeah, especially sexual. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's not cool. And especially if you're trying to do this to men that wouldn't normally uh, engage right. in this type of... I mean, of I think that's something to be said about... Buying, yeah, in, but, but, buying in male prostitutes for uh, sexual performance is against the law federally. Yeah, I but mean, I, I, and in, 
But, but no, I also no, finish, want to start Bruce, seeing yeah. more people. I want to see more people arrested. Like, where were the bookers, the security, yeah. the transportation? Yeah. Where are the assistants, the chief of staff, the chefs cooking food, people cleaning up the They're room? The I need everybody arrested. No, well, I, I think. I mean, surely, Diddy, the you know, look, if the case against Diddy is so is so overwhelming, I can quite believe these reports that are coming out that he's considering. Uh, turning on everyone. He's got no, he'll have nothing to lose. Yeah. He, he, he knows he's, he, he, I, if he doesn't, he's going to prison the rest of his life. I mean, he, he doesn't, he's look the look top dog. He, he won't be able to, uh, and, and Pierce, to cooperate against I, Hang on a second. Bruce, Bruce, you go first. He, he won't be able to cooperate against anybody. He is the top dog. Mm. Yeah, but surely he could still do some yeah. kind of deal, couldn't he? Uh, no. I don't think so. No, not he's not too big a fish. Anything. I, I will say this, right. though. I think the, the, the anti sort of uh, gay uh, sentiment in the hip hop industry really did, um, I think, may have fueled the fact that he was so undercover. Like you said, it's not, it's not legal to be gay. You can, you can have whatever. But was he gay? I mean, I don't care either I, way. But I, I what, it doesn't, was, it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. But Did I, we actually I, know if he was gay? I'm saying shopping. this in the context of his victims, his male victims. So, for example, Cassie coming out, you know, we know that they were together for almost a decade. We know that she, she, she was seen with him at many high profile events and all of that. So, she coming out as a victim of domestic, domestic violence is not unheard of. But if you have an up and coming rapper, for example, who for some reason his career just mm. didn't take off, who comes out and says, I was abused, I was raped, I was blackmailed by P. Diddy. That's very different because of the industry that they're operating in. You know, how does that person get their career back? Well, also, I mean, you, you mentioned Cassie Ventura there. To me, one of the most significant moments in this whole scandal was quite early on when that video got leaked to CNN. We've got a, a clip of this, which shows him just being unbelievably grotesquely violent yeah. to her. At the, I mean, at the time of this, we invited Diddy's ex-bodyguard, Roger Bond, to give his thoughts on the video uh, and Diddy's subsequent apology. But was that indicative of Diddy's general behaviour towards women? Uh, in, 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 in my light, I would say yes. In my light, I would say yes. It didn't surprise me when I saw it because I've seen things to this nature before. I've gotten in between things of this nature before. And this was back in 2012. So that's why I was so adamant on what I said yesterday after he posted that apology, because it comes a time where it's like, you can't just say anything you want to say and think that people are going to accept it. See, Vinny, when I saw that video, I don't know about you, but I watched it in utter horror that he would do that in, in a hotel, in a, in a public part of the hotel too. It wasn't in, in one of the rooms. It was so horrible, so violent. I then thought, well, you know what? 